Hi, this is Barry Brooksby. I've been in the financial services industry for nearly 15 years. And I remember when I first was introduced, I had a mentor and other financial planners that were telling me that the stock market had averaged a 10% rate of return. So I bought into that, it was appealing to me. I ended up getting securities licensed and life insurance licensed. But I quickly found out that it wasn't working. I didn't know why, but I was getting calls from clients and they were saying, Barry, where is this 10% rate of return that you told me we were going to get? And I didn't know what to tell them. I went back to my mentor and other financial planners and I said, look, I've got clients asking me why they're not earning a good return. And the answer I received was the same thing over and over again. They said, Barry, tell your clients they're in it for the long haul. And frankly, I didn't like that answer and it was very uncomfortable to have to go back to clients and tell them that. And it went against my grain. So I wanted to figure out why in the world can Wall Street and financial planners tell us that the stock market has averaged a 10% rate of return, but in reality, this isn't what people get. And so here's what I've discovered after many years. First of all, I was only being told about a quarter of the story. This is a gross rate of return or an average rate of return. And I wanna show you what average actually means. What I'll share here is that an average rate of return doesn't mean anything. So for example, let's say that you put $10,000 into a mutual fund. And in the first year, that mutual fund earns 100% return. But unfortunately, in the second year, you take a 50% loss. So notice I'll put in minus 50% here. And after two years, you're back down to the same 10,000 that you started with. But in year three, you do well again, and you earn another 100% on your money, so you're 20,000. Year four rolls around and things didn't go so well, you lose 50% again. So after a four year time frame, the same 10,000 that you started with is the same 10,000 you finish with. But here's what's interesting. There's an illusion behind this. The average rate of return on that investment was 25%. However, the actual rate of return is zero. So not only is this 10% an average rate of return, but it's a very misleading gross rate of return. And the other three quarters of the story that I wasn't being told was that you have to minus out taxes from this gross rate of return. You have to minus out fees, which are usually as high as three and a half percent. And many of these fees are hidden fees that are never disclosed to you, nor do they legally have to be. And then you minus out stock market volatility, the ups and downs of the stock market. And at the end of the day, now you have a net rate of return. And for most people, this falls between one and three percent. And unfortunately, this is what most people experience. Now, the alternative or the solution to investing in the stock market is utilizing a cash value permanent insurance policy, a whole life policy. So let's talk quickly about some of the benefits of whole life. I'll bullet point just a few. First of all, in a properly structured permanent whole life policy, it's possible to outperform the stock market. And there's guarantees, meaning if the stock market crashes, it doesn't matter if you've got cash in a whole life policy. Your whole life policy will continue to increase in value even if there are stock market crashes. There's also liquidity. You have access to your cash without penalty and you don't have to wait until you're 59 and a half. You also have tax-free use of your money through policy loans. And yes, it is a life insurance policy, so there is a death benefit. And with this death benefit, I will show you how it becomes an asset to you the day you implement the policy.
it's an asset to you in that you can spend and enjoy your death benefit while you're alive if you want to. And it also allows for someone to have 30 to 50% more spendable income in retirement. So it is truly an asset. It gives someone much more flexibility and many more options down the road. I would invite you to meet with us for a free consultation to find out how cash value permanent insurance can benefit you in your financial plan.